Hey now, everybody, it's Matt here from the Star Wars Time Show, and yes, I am back in the saddle, breaking down new Star Wars comics, starting right here with Crimson Rain number one, which is the first of a, I think, a five-comic miniseries run that is going to cross over into some of the other proper Star Wars comics. So, you know, obviously Crimson Dawn was made anew again in the War of the Bounty Hunters miniseries that took place this past summer, and now it is moving into its sequel of sorts with Crimson Rain. So in this issue, we finally got inside Kira's mind and what her ultimate plan and goal is for Crimson Dawn uh, during the timeline just after the Empire Strikes Back before Return of the Jedi. Okay, so the issue kicks off, curiously, as a flashback. Well, the story's being told as a flashback. Obviously, this panel here is in the present. Some sort of light side force user approaches this thing, uh, activates it, and then this archivist character comes out and starts to tell the story of Kira. So I, I found that to be interesting, and meaning by the end of this, maybe we'll finally see who was the one that activated it. Was it Luke? Is it another light side force user? Who knows? Uh, but moving on. So uh, the comic just kind of starts off again reminding everyone that Kira has brought Crimson Dawn back to the galaxy. She's gathered all sorts of misfits, other criminals, other syndicates, specialists, assassins, you name it. She's gathered them for a ultimate plan. And we finally find out what this plan is. And the plan is, is to take out the Sith. Yes, that's right. She doesn't care about Crimson Dawn becoming a major criminal syndicate again or taking over the Hut's uh, power vacuum that is now in place thanks to Vader wiping out the Hut Council. No. She knows that the only way for people to be truly free in this galaxy is to take out the Puppet Masters, and that is Sidious and Vader. So... I found that interesting. I, I guess, I don't know, I'm kind of foolish. I kind of figured she was just trying to bring Crimson Dawn back to be a major player and kind of take over the Star Wars underworld. But no, that is not it at all. She knows from her time with, with Maul and studying and waiting and learning that the real master of the galaxy, the one that is not allowing everyone to be who they want to be and live their best life, is Palpatine, a.k.a. Sidious. She knows it all. It's fantastic stuff. Um, so, uh, throughout the comic, after she lays down her charge, she sets all these people she's gathered on missions. Some are going to go and cause chaos. Some are going to go kill people. Some are going to infiltrate. Some are going to spy. And it's all with the end goal in mind of taking out Sidious and his buddy Vader. Um, so, you know, like I said, she, she knows all this through Maul, all right? She, she even discusses in the issue Maul's plan to take out Sidious and, at the time, Anakin Skywalker, but she mentions he was, uh, he died before he could finish his goal, which we know to be true because he died at the hands of Kenobi on Tatooine. So it's a cool little flashback we got in there as well. But like I said, she sends out her factions, and, and this one here, uh, the orphans, they just kind of go out and cause chaos to start making all the other criminal syndicates question each other. You know, what are you guys doing? Why are you doing this? All right, so she initiated this plan by herself and her other, I guess, envoys going to the heads of the main syndicates and saying, hey, you know what? We don't want to take over. Uh, the Empire needs someone to be a new partner now that the Huts have screwed them over, so why don't you all try to do it? So she's setting them all up to uh, kind of screw them in the end. And, and like I said, she goes, she enacts her kind of shadow forces to go there and start screwing with the other syndicates so they start to hate and distru distrust each other more than they even have in the past. All right, so... While that's going on, it obviously catches the attention of the Emperor, which she wanted. Um, and then, uh, obviously, he's going to get Vader involved, too. And we know Vader is involved through his own comic. He's kind of going through and 
seeing what type of forces he can gather to help take on Crimson Dawn. Another interesting aspect of this issue is that uh, the Knights of Ren, their charge from Kira is to go take <laughs> take on Vader's castle and Vader himself. So, you know, Ren, Ren's getting his group ready to rock here, and let's just say they're a little nervous. But they have faith that they can do it now that they're in league with Kira and Crimson Dawn. All right, and then uh, we also learn that Crimson Dawn had plans to enlist the help of any remaining Jedi to help them take down the Sith. And you can see here in this panel, the archivist, at least before she gets turned into a holocron-like oracle, is the one that was doing the research here. And hey, she finds Yoda. And what she's saying here is like, listen, if the Jedi don't help us as allies in this mission to take down the Sith, uh, there'll at least be some bait. Because again, the Crimson Dawn, they're, they're, they're in the gray. They're not going to be full good, full bad. They're that anti-hero type it's, it's turning out to be. Um, so, you know, like I said, the whole gist of the first issue here was just to announce her plans. She's going to go out. She's got everyone going. All these irons in the fire. Got people causing chaos. Got assassins getting ready to kill. All with the end goal of taking out Palpatine Invader. But as the issue starts to end, we learn from the archivist again in her story recap to whatever light side force user she's talking to from the beginning of the comic. Um, she's pretty much setting up that Kira's plan, even though she's done everything, dotted all the I's, crossed all the T's, is ultimately going to fail her and cost her something huge. And I'm guessing that's going to be her life as the comic ends with uh, this story is a tragedy. All right, so pretty good first issue of the Crimson Rain run. Like I said, I believe we have four more plus some crossover issues with Aphra, Star Wars, Vader, the Bounty Hunters, and all that fun stuff. So I'll make sure to get these covered up, broken down, and delivered to your eyes and ears. But don't forget to check in to the Star Wars Time Show. We do a live stream every Tuesday right here on YouTube. So make sure to subscribe down there below and set that notification alarm. Live streams are every Tuesday around 2.30p. And then the podcast comes out on Wednesdays. And we have subscription links for the podcast too if that's how you prefer to consume your Star Wars. Matt signing off for the Star Wars Time Show where we always know that if you listen to it it'll make you a better star wars fan and it will give you the force and all sorts of other fun stuff so just tune in to the star wars time show because if you do listen to it that force will be with you always